Janelle Grant's attorney says her inbox has been flooded by those willing to attest to a culture of corruption at WWE. Today, lawyer Ann Callis appeared on Morning America and spoke about the lawsuit her client filed last week against Vince McMahon, John Laronitis, and WWE. To which she said, it's been a long process and Grant wants to speak out for any other victims and eradicate this culture of corruption that has permeated every cell of the WWE. Grant's attorney continued to say she feels overwhelmed by the number of people who have come forward, including other possible victims. Saying, my office and my inbox have had a barrage of people wanting to come forward to attest about this culture of corruption and also possible victims. We are just beginning now to wade through all of this, but we're frankly overwhelmed. She went on to say Grant wants justice because she wants to change the culture that is going on in the WWE. She wants to help other victims. She thinks by speaking out and coming forward first that others will feel emboldened and encouraged to come forth. In the lawsuit, Janelle Grant contends that WWE's internal probe into Vince McMahon that concluded in November 2022 was a sham. It states that no one from the company reached out to Janelle regarding the investigation despite her stating she was willing to take part. Following this, former member of WWE's board of directors and head of the internal probe, Jeff Speed, told the New York Times that the investigation included outrage to Ms. Grant and engagement with her lawyer. The lawsuit filed against McMahon, Laurinaitis, and WWE was the featured story in last week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, available on the site right now for subscribers. In the issue, our very own Dave Meltzer writes that for the third time since last June's revelation about women being paid hush money regarding sexual activity involving Vince McMahon, charges in a lawsuit filed on January 25th may finally end the career of the most powerful man in the history of the industry. Additionally, today, John Laurinaitis' lawyer says his client is a victim of Vince McMahon. As mentioned earlier in this video, John Laurinaitis along with WWE and Vince McMahon was listed as a defendant in the lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant last week. He will be represented by lawyer Edward Brennan, who released a statement to Vice Media about the case on Thursday, saying, Mr. Laurinaitis denies the allegations in the misguided complaint and will be vigorously defending these charges in court, not the media. Adding, like the plaintiff, Mr. Laurinaitis is a victim in the case, not a predator. The truth will come out. In response to a follow-up question asking for clarity, Brennan said, Power, control, employment, supervisory capacity, dictatorial sexual demands with repercussions if not met. Count how many times in the complaint Vince exerts control over both of them. Laurinaitis was fired from WWE in August 2022 following allegations in a Wall Street Journal article against him and Vince McMahon. He was placed in his role as head of talent relations by Bruce Pritchard. He had been with the company since 2001. Prior to that, he was briefly the head booker of WCW in 2000. Today, Shawn Michaels went through what he called his toughest media call yet, answering questions about safety of those that work at the WWE Performance Center in the wake of the Vince McMahon lawsuit, in addition to addressing past allegations made about himself. When asked about past allegations that Brutus Beefcake made about himself and Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels flatly denied them and said that Brutus Beefcake himself walked those comments back in the past. He said that he made mistakes in the past, but never did anything that wasn't consensual. Adding those who engage in that behavior typically have issues with power and women, which he never experienced. While never directly asked about his thoughts about the Vince McMahon lawsuit allegations from last week, Shawn Michaels was asked several times about the safety and protocols and environment at the Performance Center. He reiterated that they tried to foster an open environment and welcome communication from talent. Yeah, well, look, I think you can always improve on that, but it's, look, it's a, an incredibly sad situation. Um, you know, as everybody knows, I have very little, <laughs> absolutely nothing to do, and gladly so, uh, with the corporate stuff that goes on. Uh, we try to focus here in NXT on uh, the young men and women that come through these doors. Uh, and we do, we try to, we do. I think we foster a, a, a safe and supportive atmosphere down here. Um, I know that they... Uh, uh, you know, they reinstalled and upgraded, uh, I think, in 2022, some of those, 
you know, some of those regulations and whatnot. But look, we're always uh, conscious of that. Um, and one thing that I, I do, uh, it's incredibly important to uh, support the talent and give them a, a safe working environment. I like to think we do that, absolutely. Uh, but look, we will always continue to try to, to be better about that. Um, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm very glad to say that I think we do a really fantastic job down here. Asked if staff has had conversations with talents about the McMahon situation, Sean said everyone is aware. He takes working with young talents seriously in all aspects of the business and wants them to tell the truth. He said everyone is excited about the future despite the situation and that quote, the windows have opened up and everyone is ready to move forward. When asked about what policies were specifically updated in 2022 to help make a safer environment, he couldn't recall them, but said they didn't need to refer to a piece of paper to ensure the goal of making the PC a safe environment for everyone, even extending to those like his daughter who visits every week. Shawn Michaels said transparency and openness has changed everything with how they train people at NXT. He said treating people with love and respect isn't that hard to do and wants to keep fostering that environment. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.